Welcome to Matsubrix. In this video, I'm going to show the Matsu train controller, which we need to operate a train on our fully automated Lego uh, train layout. Uh, in the past, you have seen uh, in the recent videos everything about switches, signals and sensors. Uh, the most important component, of course, if you want to automate a train, is the train controller. And this is what this video is about. First of all, just uh, to understand what we're talking about, uh, there will be three different types of train controllers, which we are going to support. The first one is for Lego power functions, that's the old motors with that uh, connector here, uh, two by two dots. Uh, then we also have a controller for Lego powered up. This is the, the new battery boxes with the integrated Bluetooth receivers. Uh, and we are also going to support the 40 bricks Wi-Fi train receivers, uh, which are also more or less widely spread uh, in the uh, Lego train area. So uh, there will be three different kinds of uh, uh, systems for operating trains here. In the near future there will be a video about uh, uh, Powered Up and also about 40 bricks. But here we're talking about uh, the Matsum train controller for power functions. In this video, I'll give a short sneak preview about that powered up uh, train controller as well, but only a short cliffhanger, so to say. Let's have a look how that works and feels. Um, I have started Rockrail here, and the train is already connected to Rockrail. And uh, we can first uh, just try it with a manual mode. Uh, I'm pulling this lever up to certain uh, uh, position. And now you can see the train is taking off very gently. So uh, we have a small acceleration program in the microcontroller that makes it go very smoothly. And uh, that also works uh, in automatic mode. If I'm traveling from this block to the next, it should be going. Ah, okay, Rockwell is going the other way around. But anyway, the result will be the same. Yeah, that worked pretty nicely. So let's have a look at the Matsu train controller for power functions in greater detail. Uh, I've uh, put this experiment train uh, here on my desk in the Matsu labs. Uh, and I've also put a little bit of the uh, side shields and the roof of the wagon apart that we can have a look at it in greater detail. So, uh, what do we have here? First, it's the battery pack. For this train, I'm using a battery pack with uh, eight rechargeable batteries. So that makes uh, something in the area of uh, 10 to 11 volt if it's fully charged. Uh, charged. Then we have a small uh, switch, uh, which can be used to switch the whole thing uh, on and off. This one is exactly eight millimeters uh, wide which is uh, exactly uh, the size of a Lego brick. So that makes it pretty easy to put it somewhere here into the train on the side or uh, wherever it fits. So I've started the train now. And now let's uh, have a look at the controller. The controller is attached with the power cables here um, to the battery pack. It's uh, again an ESP8266 controller, which we use, we've also used for the other uh, Matsu controllers for switches, sensors and lights. Um, the uh, difference to the other uh, controllers is that we're using a motor shield. It's the L9110 uh, component here. 
And um, attached to that motor shield is, uh, well, a simple power functions cable here. I just bought one from Lego, uh, cut it into two halves. So if you do that, you've got uh, actually two cables with the standard power functions connector here. Uh, you need the outer uh, wires of the cable. Uh, it's easier to attach it to the controller if you um, um, solder it a little bit together, then it can be easily screwed into those uh, motor connectors here. So that's basically the heart of that thing. -o. It converts uh, very low currents into the high currents that you need for the uh, electrical motor, which is here and is connected with the standard power functions cable to the motor sheet. Um, also, we have some wires here for some lights. And you can see here, it's a rear light uh, for the uh, last wagon. And here for the front light uh, of the train, it's actually that wire here, so uh, just a light cable. Uh, and we've got uh, one specialty for that controller as well. Uh, for the ESP controller here, we've got an analog input, A0. And uh, we are measuring the voltage of the power supply here constantly when we operate the microcontroller. That's important because the speed of the train depends on the voltage uh, of the battery pack and that gets lower and lower when you operate the train of course. So we are monitoring the voltage and what we do is we correct the power that is applied to the motor for a certain uh, requested speeds in Rockrail uh, and uh, therefore compensate for the voltage loss in the power supply. The outcome is that the train has always the same speed, even if the battery gets lower. That's obviously pretty important. So let's have a look if that all works. Um, we have rock rail set up and first we check the uh, lights a little bit. I'm hitting the light key here in rock rail, one of the function keys. Well, that, so that's working. Let's have a look at the other one. Hope you can see it. Yeah, something is happening. Very nice. And which is what is also important is that we have the uh, uh, speed control here. So if I set a speed and rock radio, the motor is going to turn and watch out, uh, the motor is not going to go abruptly to that speed, but it's very gently accelerating. So let me accelerate to cruising speed. And what you see is that the power in the motor is building up very slowly and gently and makes it pretty realistic, at least realistically, uh, more realistically uh, uh, than uh, if you would have an abrupt uh, go or stop command here and it also works for the reversal of the speed so I just uh, hit on reverse very slowly the engine is now uh, braking and then accelerating in the other direction so as one exception if I hit the stop button train is going to stop immediately because you must make sure that it doesn't overrun too much uh, on a stop sensor when arriving on a stop sensor. The Matsu train controller also respects the emergency brake, shut off and stop commands in Rockrail. So if anything goes wrong, uh, we have uh, a uh, braking command, which is a general generic command in Rockrail. And each of the Matsu train controllers will automatically stop the engine and until you reset it with the power off and power on button in Rockrail, uh, the train is going to stop. Yeah? So that makes 
it easier uh, if a sensor doesn't work or a microcontroller has lost connection uh, to Rockrail. Uh, then all train stops and you can uh, solve the problem without having a uh, mass crash on all of your layout, uh, which is uh, not good for your trains and a lot of work to clean up. Now we have a look at the settings that we need in Rockrail to make this all work and function together with the Matzo train controller. Uh, first of all, there is one general setting uh, in the Rockrail uh, properties that I found pretty handy. It's the um, e-brake at ghost train setting in the uh, automatic tab. When we set that, um, then uh, the following is going to happen. If the train is going on a wrong way, for example, the switch didn't work properly uh, and the train is hitting a sensor where it is not expected to be, then the block will turn into a, a ghosted block, a ghost train is a block. And when we set this setting here, the um, uh, emergency brake is pulled and all trains are going to stop. So that's pretty handy if you want uh, if you want to avoid a uh, mass carambolage on your layout. Then let's have a look at the specific uh, train settings here. Let's find our train. There it is, the Eurostar. When we click on the uh, picture here, we can set a different picture for the train. Uh, it's, uh, I believe it's a JPEG image that you need and the height must be 80 pixels. Uh, the rest is up to you. Then in the general section, you should uh, define an ID for your train. Uh, it can be anything which is alphanumeric. I'm using that uh, abbreviations here. That's EST for Eurostar, for example. It, it gets important. When we get to the uh, 40 bricks receivers later, but that's coming in another video in the future. Uh, then let's go to the interface section. Uh, it's important that you put in the ID of the Matsu train controller here. It works. It works like for the other controllers. Uh, the Matsu train controller is generating a random ID and it's storing in the uh, micro SIP. Uh, here uh, when it uh, boots the first time and um, exactly that ID which you can see when you um, look at the MQTT messages uh, must be entered here into the address field um, and another important thing is that you set the decoder steps to uh, a value which is as high as possible which is 255 uh, in Rockrail. that's the maximum uh, value which can be set here and this is the granularity and or the number of speed steps of the logical speed steps that we can assign to the controller so as, as more speed steps we have the more uh, fluently and gently we can make the train accelerate and break. Then the number of functions, that's the number of digital pins here on our microcontroller. At the moment we're using uh, two for the uh, headlights and the rear light. Um, we have uh, still some pins free so it wouldn't be a problem to, to assign more pins uh, for uh, those uh, functions and if we uh, put off uh, one of the uh, motor on the motor shield here we would even have um, uh, two pins more so that would make six digital pins which uh, would be available that's a lot of options for you uh, things and lights and other stuff that you can build into a train well basically that's it on the interface page when we go to the speed table which is also very important uh, you must make sure that you've selected the percent uh, setting here for the train uh, and then it's uh, the power settings in percent for your motor that you must assign to the minimum maximum values and also for the mid value and the cruise value here you can do a little bit of experimenting 
uh, just try it out which uh, speed works uh, best for that uh, specific train that you have here. Uh, the minimum speed value is the speed value that you need at least that the train is still moving. No? That's important. Uh, and the maximum speed value is the uh, maximum uh, power that you want to uh, put into your train uh, that it's not derailing uh, instantaneously and um, the cruise value must be a value which really assures that the train is only going with a speed that uh, with uh, which is can't derail of course but you try that out it's a little bit of tinkering but in the end uh, everything should be fine so uh, next steps uh, it's never ready such a project that is for sure uh, what we're going to do uh, is we uh, want to make it a little bit easier to configure the controller. At the moment, you have to do a lot of things in the source code. We want to configure a lot of things uh, directly via Rockray, so you don't have to recompile and upload your source code again. Um, uh, we have the uh, Matsu Train controller for uh, powered up ready. I'm going to show it later, at least a small uh, sneak preview. And we're also going to build the Matsu train controller for 40 bricks Wi-Fi train controllers to make them compatible with Rock Rail as well. And of course, this whole thing is at the moment still pretty massive. So uh, one very important thing is to make it smaller, build a small uh, case for it, maybe uh, 3D printed. Uh, so that we have all of the electronics here in a small box comparable to a battery box uh, that you know from uh, Lego uh, that we don't fill a whole wagon with all of the stuff uh, here uh, and make it uh, so small that in a good case it even fits into the uh, locomotive uh, altogether. Welcome back to the layout. Uh, now let's do a little bit of uh, train riding. I promised you to also show the uh, power up solution here. I'm going to do that just in a minute. Uh, I've set up uh, the locomotives already. The Eurostar is here, the Crocodile is here. So let's first go with the Eurostar to that block on the left side. Okay. Very nicely. Now we've got some space here in that area for the crocodile. And uh, I've also set up a small uh, schedule. Uh, that's, that's like a, a defined route along the layout. And that schedule is called X. And what's going to happen is all trains that are coming from this side will go over the crossing and turn from the outer track to the inner track and vice versa. Very beautiful. Okay. So then uh, let's make some space here and I'll assign the same tour or schedule to the Eurostar. Some switches are turning, I've heard that. And the train is going. Hopefully it's going over the switches here. Yes. Very nice. has already been cleared over the switches here again and as soon as it arrives in that block the previous block is free and also the route over the switches here making space for the Eurostar which is taken off again 
Yeah. And well, you can just sit here and watch that movement for hours <laughs> until the batteries are empty, of course. So that's uh, an example for a still fairly simple but absolutely operational uh, automated uh, layout to get a little bit more movement on the table. You could probably assign the Eurostar because he's a lot. It's it's a lot quicker uh, into a random movement. Which should bring a little bit more of calf on the table. So So that's uh, working pretty nicely, I would say. I promise to show you the solution that we have uh, built for uh, the powered up uh, hubs now. And this is the crocodile, which is available from uh, Lego since 1st of July of 2020 this year. Uh, and um, well, you might ask. Uh, if we have built such a complex solution for the powered up uh, Matsu controller, is there also so much electronics inside this uh, crocodile for powered up? And I show you. Let me just uh, take the action cam. If I open the roof, you will see absolutely nothing special. That's the standard powered up hub from Lego and the powered up motor here and absolutely no electronics. So what's happening here? The solution is that we have built a small microcontroller which you can see here and that acts as a bridge between uh, rock rail transmitting information via Wi-Fi uh, to the powered up hub which is transmitting or receiving the uh, information for the motor via Bluetooth. And uh, that's basically all we need. It's a pretty simple solution and we don't need a lot of extra hardware to make this all work. Uh, there will be a video about it where I show you the details, uh, how to build that controller, how to set it up in RockRail, uh, thank you very much for your patience. It's going to take another probably couple of weeks until we can publish that. And uh, so far, I hope uh, you are uh, satisfied with that power function solution as well. Um, I mean, the components for that are pretty cheap. One uh, Lego motor costs around uh, 10 or 15 euros or uh, dollars. So that's not too much and uh, all of the components that you need for the controller are also in the area of a couple of bucks. So that's not so expensive than buying a powered up hub and the motors for that. Uh, so whatever you choose, uh, it will be uh, something that works and is compatible with our solution. Yeah, so... Um, I'll probably just start the trains again, let them uh, go a couple of rounds 
and uh, I hope you had fun watching this video. If you want to stay updated, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, also give it a thumbs up. Uh, and you can also sub subscribe to our Facebook channel, uh, where we have all the news about Lego train automation and uh, Lego track planning. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Enjoy!